Welcome to Tim's Antique Trains. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Tim's Antique Trains. If you had seen my American Flyer Parade of Trains video back in July that I did for the 4th of July, you probably saw several American Flyer trains parading around and pulling some HO steam engines on the flat cars. One of them does not work. That's this one right here. The Tyco Mantua 040 switcher. And today we're going to take a look at it and get it to run. So let's take it over to the HO layout and see what happens. Thanks for joining me at the bench. We're going to take apart this Tyco switch engine and see why it doesn't go. But <laughs> Now I've seen people take these apart on YouTube before, I've never taken one like this apart before myself, so we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. This would be the screw for the coupler. This screw, yeah it looks like these two are for the drive shafts, that one down there is for the motor. Is it? Is it for the motor? It might be some adjustment screw. This one is for sure for the motor and this one's just for the... Um, link bar. So we'll try this one here and see what it does. And there's our motor. It spins all right. Not much magnetism left though. So this brush is insulated and this runs to the tender it should actually oh it's actually pinched in there yeah that was routed wrong in the first place this usually runs through the cab like that clean the brushes next i think is a good place to start i want to do one at a time i don't like monkeying with these brushes when the whole thing falls apart yeah this is pretty dirty so i think what i'm gonna have to do is actually i'll just take it all apart and do the whole thing probably end up taking the motor out because then it'll make cleaning the mechanism a lot easier. These brushes are sort of worn. And there we have it. The motor is out of the frame. That was easy. Actually, the gaps between these commutator pads look really clean. There's not really any buildup in them. Yeah, this is cleaning up quite nicely, I think. <clears throat> so then I'll just wipe this dry with the dry side of the Q-tip so it doesn't leave so much residue. I think this is a 5 pole motor too, which is actually kind of fancy. I do have this thing. I'm not, so far, have not been terribly impressed with it. I'll give it a shot, see if it'll do any more polishing. Yeah, it's getting that real shiny now. So it is good at polishing, it's just not good for heavy duty cleaning, degreasing type stuff. You'll kind of ruin it early. Looks good. I'm gonna give this some oil. On this side, I only put a drop because there's no real oil pad. Won't, won't take much to drown it. We don't wanna do that. But we'll get this side nice and soaked. Yeah, it feels pretty good to me. Okay, we'll take our brushes and polish those off. Okay, this brush goes on the side where it's insulated. Normally I like to leave the cloth wires intact because I like the originality of that, but this one might be starting to shred a little bit. These are nice brush springs too, they don't go crazy, they don't explode. They're held in place nicely. 
Then we'll put our other brush in. Looks pretty good to me. Let's give it some juice from the old transformer, how about? We'll see if that wire is any good at the same time. Oh yeah, runs great. Pretty much be ready to put this back together. But I'm going to pull the bottom plate off this and... Ooh, somebody might have used Vaseline on this. It's actually not too bad. But I think I'm going to have to go ahead and clean that out. So we'll just do one at a time. They said back in the day you can use Vaseline as a lubricant, but I do not recommend doing that obvious, for obvious reasons because it turns to goo and just like any other grease, it will dry up, turn really nasty after 30, 40, 50 years of sitting. That's actually not too bad. I'm going to leave it like that. Oh, that, that feels a whole lot better, actually. Do something similar to the front one. Kind of just squish out that dried up Vaseline. Cool, so let's give that some oil. Okay, put the bottom plate back on. All right, time for the motor. Looks like we're in the exact spot it was before. It kind of sits just nicely like that, so we'll tighten there down. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm just going to oil up the main gear now with some gear oil. Okay, I'm ready to put back together the Tyco 040. Off camera, I had taken the opportunity to replace the wire coming from the tender because this one is quite stripped and this end was frayed and I think it was rubbing against the motor and causing all kinds of problems. So I replaced it with a new piece of wire. It's not quite as flexible, but it doesn't have to bend really that much because the corners aren't super tight on this. Um, also off camera, I decided to wash the tender shell, so I took that apart. So now I'm going to put the wheels back on the tender. Okay, I got the steam chest, I think, back together. I will get the shell slip back on. That's all there is to that. Now, just screw it back down. Then I'm going to test it to make sure it's not binding before we run it to the tracks. Not bad. All right, let's take it over to layout and test it. All right, it's the moment of truth if my work paid off. Let's see if this runs.
runs pretty good. Now let's hook up some cars and see if this will pull a train around the layout. Now this engine has a Mantua hook coupler, loop coupler on the front, and I think it would be only fitting if we pulled some Mantua cars behind this as well. So let me go get some of those cars and hook her up. Well, that was pretty unusual to have a switch engine push it around the main line, but that's what these engines were built to do, push and pull trains in the yards. I hope you enjoyed this little restoration project of the Tyco Mantua 040 switch engine. Thanks for watching Tim's Antique Trains, and don't forget to like and subscribe.